Postmaster General of the United States, Mr. Arthur E. Summerfield. Welcome to your United States Post Office Department. We Americans have the largest mail service in the world. In fact, we send and receive more mail than all of the rest of the world combined. Our postal service is as complex as it is huge. Yet our mail is our most personal, our most intimate service. So with our ever-increasing volume of mail, we have some very serious problems. But we are solving them. We are making real progress. Now our narrator and the film you are about to see will show you how. You know, to most people, the vast job of handling the mails is a mystery. Folks simply drop their mail in the neighborhood mailbox, then don't give it another thought. They just have faith that it will be delivered to the addressee within a day or so anywhere in the United States, or the whole world, for that matter. Your post office has given such dependable service for so long that speed and accuracy are taken for granted. We're glad for this confidence. But today, we can't take it for granted any longer. Let's face it, our method of handling the mail is old-fashioned. Our population today is nearly 180 million, and it's growing so rapidly that by 1985, we will have about 250 million people to serve. By 1985, our suburbs will at least double in size, which means that we will have to cover much more ground to deliver your mail. We're building a million new homes every year. By 1985, we'll be building two and a quarter million new ones each year, every one of which will need regular mail service. What's more, today, America has over four and a quarter million businesses, and by 1985, it'll have more than six million. Each will depend upon the mail service to help it succeed. Now, let's look at our mail needs another way. Our USA occupies only one-fiftieth of the globe but we handle nearly two-thirds of all the mail in the world, over 61 billion pieces each year. These are happy facts for our people, but they create real problems for your postal service. Because of this growth and prosperity, we must handle more mail than ever before with a postal plant that is already bursting at the seams. Starting in 1953, the management of your post office department began an aggressive program to modernize the handling of your mail and other postal operations. I want to show you some of these modern machines, but you'll understand them better if first we take a look at some of the outmoded operations still in use today. Just look at the crowded conditions under which these clerks must work. Certainly, we urgently need improvements here. And many of our post offices were great edifices in their day but they were designed more for Victorian elegance than for modern convenience. This old lobby is a good example of wasted space. It's a dreary place. In winter, it's likely to be poorly heated, and in summer, it's badly ventilated. And behind the lobby, we still sort letters by hand in much the same manner as they did in Ben Franklin's day. And when we're crowded like this, your mail is slowed down and money is wasted. On the average, your letter must be handled at least 17 times, each time by hand. This is slow and tedious. Parcel post problems are severe, too. Clerks must read each address, throw the package into the right hamper. Workers must push the hampers by hand, then lift each package by hand to send it on its way. Again, slow and tedious. Now you know that our big bottleneck is speeding the mail into, through, and out of post offices. But we are making real progress and improvement in our determination to speed up your mail. For example, here is the two-story transformer, which sorts letters. With five trained operators, this machine can sort 15,000 of your letters each hour and do it hour after hour and day after day. It doesn't get tired. Clerks here can sort to 300 destinations. Compare this with a hand sorting clerk who can only sort to about 84 destinations at a time. The transformer is faster and surer. Here's 
another new way to speed the mail. It's called the mail flow system. We've installed it in Detroit to move mail mechanically between areas on working floors, eliminating disorder, early burly confusion, and a lot of costly walking and manual handling of mail. The conveyors are electrically controlled and move the mail to the clerk who's ready to sort it. Incidentally, the new trays weigh less than a pound. The old ones weighed four and a half pounds. Let's suppose it's dispatch time for Arizona. The dispatcher simply calls... Arizona, Arizona. ...into the loudspeaker. The clerks then take the mail from their Arizona pigeonholes and place it on the conveyor belt, which speeds it on its way. And after some 50 years, we are at last mechanizing the handling of parcel post, too. Now in Baltimore, conveyor belts bring the packages to a keyboard operator who reads the address and then punches the right key. An electronic eye measures the parcel size and then operates these patterns. Your parcel post packages are accurately and swiftly pushed into the proper chute. machines are only the beginning of our modernization program. Other machines to do the job better and faster are in the process of development. But not all of our new machinery is inside the post offices. We're making improvements outside, too. Let's look in on your old friend and neighbor, the postman, who calls on you day after day, rain or shine. By regulation, he is limited to 35 pounds of mail in that sack on his shoulder, yet he has to deliver much more than that every day. So we use storage boxes. We call them relay boxes along the way. The letter carriers can then reload their shoulder sacks at these boxes. But postal trucks must load the relay boxes. And other trucks have to deliver your parcel post packages along the same route the carrier walks because the packages are too big, too heavy for him to carry in his shoulder sack. This means it takes two trucks, two drivers, and a foot carrier to serve a mail route. To help solve this problem, the new Mailster has been developed. With the Mailster, your postman can carry up to 500 pounds of mail and parcel post packages. This speeds your deliveries, and your mail is better protected from bad weather, and so is your carrier. And here's another way we're taking the load off the mailman. With this satchel cart, he can handle two bags of mail instead of one. And they're on wheels, not on his back. Among our most important improvements are these new modern buildings. Functional, beautiful, specially designed to serve as post offices. You'll find the interior pleasing, too. There are open counters, similar to those in modern banks, replacing the old barred windows. Whether the post office counters are open or closed, this lobby is always open, so that you can serve yourself day or night, Sundays or holidays. Here's a new device that helps eliminate those tiresome waiting lines. By stamps, you simply deposit your coin and dial the denomination and the number you want. The machine returns your exact change, too. If you rent a lockbox, you can get your mail even when the post office is closed. And I know you'll be pleased to know that new ballpoint pens have replaced old Scratchy. These are some of the ways we are trying to make your mailman's job easier and your postal service better. And here's a way you business people can help. You simply sort your outgoing mail into three piles. Local, out of town, and airmail special delivery. We call this patron separation. Your post office can give you these local and out of town labels. And here's something new we're introducing through our larger post offices to help heavy mailers. We call this pressure sensitized tape. It won't stick to your clothes, to your desk, to your letters but it will stick to itself, like this. See how easy it is to use? Here's another tip. Mail your letters two or even three or four times during a day. Doing this helps relieve the heavy load that backs up in your post office after 6 p.m., much of it missing the best connections to other cities. So we ask all patrons to follow this advice. Separate local from out of town. Tie bundles securely with twine or the new tape you just saw. Use zone numbers. 
And above all, mail early and often. We will continue to work with the National Bureau of Standards and leading research and engineering firms on methods and machines that will speed your mail even faster than those you've just seen. Right now, in various laboratories, we are building and testing some of these machines of tomorrow. For example, this is an experimental automatic culling machine which separates ordinary letter-sized mail from parcels and other off-size items such as extra-large letters, hotel keys, and so forth. We must make this separation since the facing and canceling machines can handle only normal letter size pieces. And here's the next step after the culling machine has collected the ordinary mail in a bin or stacked it vertically in trays. This is the experimental automatic canceller facer. Regardless of whether the letter enters the machine upside down or right side up or facing forward or backward, an electronic eye finds the stamp. The next component automatically cancels the stamp and postmarks the envelope. Letters move through these machines at the rate of 30,000 per hour. Canceled letters held in trays then are ready for the next operation by this experimental machine. Here, an electronic scanner automatically reads typed and printed addresses for 18 different cities or states. And here is a code-controlled automatic letter sorting system we have under test at another laboratory. This one can be expanded to sort to 1,000 different destinations. This machine greatly reduces the number of times a letter has to be sorted by hand. The operator reads the address on the letter, punches the right keys to code that address onto the envelope. Then the machine takes over and by reading that code, sorts the letter properly. Here it is, reading the codes and sorting letters. There is practically no limit to the number of bins to which it can sort. But for testing purposes, this experimental machine uses only a few. And we are working on many other machines. Some of these are about ready to leave the laboratory for testing under actual work conditions in a post office. Others are still being improved by the research engineers, while still more are in the idea stage for new equipment in the near future. So you can see that with what we already have in some post offices and what we are developing and planning for tomorrow in research laboratories, we are making very real progress toward our goal of next day delivery of your letters between any two cities anywhere in the United States. In this film, you have seen, perhaps for the first time, what some of our postal problems are. And you have seen positive proof that we are doing our best to solve them. You have seen a new letter sorting machine, a new parcel post sorting machine, a new conveyor system to move mail inside the post offices faster. New machines to help your carrier deliver your mail earlier. You've also seen a new post office with its 24-hour customer self-service facilities. These are just some of the ways we are trying to make your mailman's job easier and your postal service better. And as the demands on your postal service increase, as they will, we will work even harder to serve you better. That is the kind of mail service our great country should have. That's the kind of service we want to give you, the kind you expect. We can do it, and we know we can, and we will.